our planet is unique. There's no doubt about it. In any case, within the solar system, only here there's life. Only here there's a special atmosphere. And after all, only here there's YouTube. But how did this happen? After all, Mars and Venus are very similar to Earth, but it's unlikely you'll see a single video there. This is because only our planet went through the Great Oxidation Event. What? You haven't even heard of it. But it changed life on Earth forever. To understand what we're talking about, we'll have to go back 4 billion years and observe the young Earth. For a while, volcanoes were erupting on it. But on many other planets also, and even moons of the solar system, the same thing was happening. The Earth was covered by an ocean, but there was an ocean on Mars in the early period of the planet's development. Even Jupiter's giant moons Europa and Callisto were covered in an icy ocean tens of miles deep, so they had a much larger supply of moisture on the surface. The movement of tectonic plates changed the surface of the Earth, but it was the same on Venus and possibly Mars. Even the set of chemical elements on Earth wasn't much different from the neighboring planets. Basically, 4 billion years ago, our future home wasn't considered special. It was just an ordinary celestial body. But soon it would turn into something absolutely incredible. Admittedly, the Earth became unique 500 million years ago. No other planet or moon has changed in this way. It was on Earth that numerous forms of life arose and developed. Moreover, they continue to inhabit our planet even millions of years later. And it's no coincidence that I put the emphasis on this. What's important is not only the appearance of life, but also its development. Primitive, single-celled organisms that fed on the chemical energy of rocks wouldn't have been able to influence the Earth. Four billion years ago, the surface of our planet remained almost dead, black or gray, and the climate changed slowly. So, the first life forms meant almost nothing. At some point, they began to develop and learn to absorb solar radiation, getting energy. Then, primitive photosynthesis began. Microorganisms didn't even know how to produce oxygen yet. All they did was form a brown foam on the surface of the world's ocean and colored it with huge, ugly spots. But then, something changed. And these changes determined the future of our planet. Across a billion and a half years, microorganisms engaged in photosynthesis mastered a new trick. They began to emit an extremely active, aggressive gas called oxygen. And this was the turning point the beginning of the oxygen catastrophe, or the Great Oxidation Event. This happened 2 billion 400 million years ago. However, despite the name, the oxygen catastrophe didn't happen suddenly. It wasn't like, for example, the asteroid that destroyed the dinosaurs, or the explosion of a supervolcano. Short bursts of oxygen concentration had occurred, but then something utterly unique happened. In in a short period of time by the standards of Earth's history, just a few tens of millions of years, the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere increased by about a thousand times. It didn't drop again. But this was only the first step. The diversity of life was still a long time away. Microorganisms had already created brown or reddish foam in some coastal areas. By this time, spots of greenish slime were able to appear near the equator's shores and small inland reservoirs. It sounds like an insignificant detail, but it's from such small things that earthly life was born. The continents were still still empty. No plants, and certainly no animals. If a human had suddenly found themselves on a young Earth without a spacesuit, they would have died a painful death. 
there was still too little oxygen. But by the 2 billion 200 million years ago mark, its amount had increased to 1% of the current level. Again, it looks insignificant, yet it changed our planet forever. Gradually, the black gray soil began to turn rusty red. Two billion years ago, the continents on Earth must have resembled the modern surface of Mars. But in addition to the land, which was much smaller than it is today, our planet boasted blue oceans and swirls of white clouds. And yet, the main question that came to me while I was studying all this how did scientists find out such things at all? Changes in the oxygen concentration in the atmosphere several billion years ago. Nevertheless, they know what the planets of the solar system are made of, don't they? So they can do this too. The evidence of the great oxidation event is based on a large number of rock studies. On the one hand, many rocks older than 2.5 billion years contain minerals that are easily destroyed when exposed to oxygen. This means that, at that time, oxygen simply didn't exist or there wasn't enough of it. And rocks younger than 2.5 billion years old contain many unambiguous signs of oxygen. Quite simple. It's no coincidence that the oxygen catastrophe, regardless of its speed, is considered the most important event event in the history of our planet. The Great Oxidation Event led to the appearance of 3,000 types of minerals that previously hadn't existed anywhere in the solar system. Hundreds of new compounds of uranium, nickel, copper, manganese, and mercury appeared after living cells learned to produce oxygen. It opened the way for them to spread across the planet. And here's another interesting fact. For the vast majority of ancient microorganisms, this level of oxygen was deadly. Not surprisingly, the first result of the oxygen revolution was mass extinction. The survivors were mostly those who managed to create oxygen-protecting enzymes and thick cell walls. Perhaps for the first 100 or 200 million years of the new world, oxygen was, for most living organisms, only poison and nothing more. And only 650 million years ago, the amount of oxygen nearly reached current levels. If a random person were on the Earth at this time, they would no longer be at risk of suffocation. For the first time, it was possible to find scanty, but still some amount of food in the green ooze, as well as avoid a lethal dose of ultraviolet radiation. The world was still far from modern, about as far as our current planet is to the Earth a trillion years from now, or after it experiences a new supervolcanic eruption. Nevertheless, these events can be predicted, and I just love finding things like this in scientific publications. You too then we're on our way. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.